Bula Vinaka from Fiji Ashram. This is one of the most beautiful ashrams right by the sea and it's a beautiful site where nature, God and man can come together to experience that oneness of existence. So today I thought I would take this opportunity to talk to you all about the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the summary of it from this, from this beautiful ashram in Fiji Islands. We recently inaugurated the Sri Satya Sai Children's Hospital in Fiji and as we talk, there are surgeries that are going on in the operation theatre. In the last two days, seven surgeries have been performed and even today as we talk now, surgeries are on and that is Karma Yoga and therefore I would like to talk about that in the context of this Fiji work since we are talking from Fiji Islands that how Karma Yoga is so essential for everyone in the world in general but more so for people who work in organizations like ours where selflessness is not an option that de desirelessness is not a choice it is a must everybody must be selfless in their activities and everybody must do it absolutely with no expectations no desires for anything whatsoever not even the desire for success or failure the surgeries are going on let us say the doctor is performing surgery they have done everything that is possible in their might whatever they understand of it but it may happen or that there could be surprises in the last moment and there may be chances that the surgeries may succeed or may fail but by when we keep thinking about whether we will succeed or fail we cannot give our best because our expectations of the outcome disturbs our equanimity so that is the idea of karma yoga that how we have to do everything without expectations of the results in a certain way whatever comes is acceptable to us so there is no expectation there is acceptance in karma yoga anyways i'll summarize quickly what we have studied so far because it's been long time and we should uh, brush up our memory about the bhagavad gita so we all know there are there is this arjuna who goes to the battlefield all ready to fight a battle and all of a sudden, when he sees his kit and kin on the other side, especially his beloved grandfather, teachers, cousins whom he likes, he loses his sense of discrimination, becomes despondent. He wants to escape from the duty of fighting the battle and he wants to go back. And he tells Krishna, let's turn the chariot. I don't think I can fight the war. Let's go back. Krishna was just a charioteer at that point in time. And Arjuna command, could command him take my chariot to the middle of the battleground and also he could command him take my chariot back I don't want to fight the battle but Krishna performs a duty more than that of a charioteer that's compassion of Krishna to be a charioteer is also a com also an act of compassion and now to decide to be a teacher of Arjuna is also an act of compassion so God performs many roles at many times for the sake of his devotee he becomes a father to somebody mother to another friend to another, teacher to another, even a charioteer or a driver to his own devotee. He can do many roles for the sake of what? Why should God do all these things? This chapter 4 that we are going to come to, God defines, God tells us the reason why he does all these things that he chooses to do. So anyway, the first chapter happens, Arjuna is all lost, confused and uh, in a way sad and uh, sick of his own uh, thinking of his own disposition that he is not able to make up his mind and so in the whole of the first chapter he just expresses himself and in the second chapter is when Krishna speaks for the first time patient listener Krishna is a teacher has to be a patient listener first and then only teach after diagnosing the patient only we can uh, give some prescription so Krishna listens to Arjuna and then tells what is this what is wrong with you Arjuna What's have, what has come over you? Why do you want to do this? And then he goes on to explain. Arjuna tells, okay, I don't know what to do. And first time Arjuna says, I am, consider me as your shishya. Because I am so confused. Don't think I am your cousin. Don't think I am disciple or devotee. Or don't think I am your friend. I am your disciple at this moment. Please teach me. So unless the disciple submits himself to the teacher, how can teacher teach? If patient does not come to the doctor, how will the doctor treat the patient? So, Krishna creates the situation in which Arjuna finds himself helpless and the only option that he is left with is to ask Krishna what to do. 
And when he asks with sincerity, Krishna responds. And then he gives him several reasons why he should still fight the battle. He tells him, see, nobody dies and nobody is born. We are Atman, we are not this body. Body undergoes changes, Atman remains. And there was never a time when you and I were not there or all these people were not there. And there will never be a time when we won't be there in some form and name in another place, doing another thing. So just don't bother about it. Go ahead and fight. He tells, even if you think Atman does not exist, we are indestructible. Anyways, we are going to die someday or the other. So as well, you die today fighting the battle, which is, a, which is an honorable thing to do for a Kshatriya than to run away from the battlefield like a coward. Even if you don't understand that because you are born Kshatriya, for the sake of your good name fight, otherwise people will laugh at you and your generations, for generations together, they will make a mockery of you. So, Sankhya Yoga, analytical knowledge. Krishna is analyzing the situation and giving him various logic and reasoning to uh, convince him to fight the battle. And also at that point in time, Krishna in the second chapter, which is kind of an essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Second chapter is so important, though it's called Sankhya Yoga. It is actually the entire Bhagavad Gita's summary. So that in that chapter, he also teaches him about Buddhi Yoga. He says, I'm going to teach you something about Buddhi Yoga. The first half is Sankhya Yoga and second half is Buddhi Yoga. What is this Buddhi Yoga? Buddhi Yoga simply means use your brains, use your intelligence. Don't simply do things out of emotions and attachments. Use some discrimination. That is Buddhi Yoga. And he teaches him at that point of time, for the first time, he talks about karma. What does he say? The first shloka that he ever mentions about karma is karmanyevadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phalehetu bhu ma te sangostu akarmani. Your duty is only to perform actions, Arjuna, and not to worry about the results that are going to come out of it, whether those people will die, whether your people will die, whether you yourself will die in this battle. This is all secondary. This is not to be considered. First, think that you have to do your duty. This is a karma bhumi. No, we can't escape action. We have to perform our duty. So go ahead and discharge your duty as a Kshatriya whose job is not just to save his family or fight for his own rights. He has to fight for the good of the whole society. Kshatriya's job is to protect everyone. So go ahead and fight this battle of dharma. So he first lesson in karma, karma that Krishna teaches is do your duty without desires for the actions. You have no right over the results. You have only right over the action. This is the first principle of Karma Yoga he teaches. So what should you just because we tell you don't be desirous of the fruits of the actions. It does not mean that you say that okay then I don't want to fight at the bar at all because when you do tell me not to expect anything out of it why should I fight. Krishna says don't be attached to the action. Don't be attached to inaction also. Just do action for duty's sake. That is the first principle of Karma Yoga Krishna teaches in the second chapter. The second principle he teaches in uh, Karma Yoga is Yoga Stakkuru Karmani Sangam Tat Chektva Dhananjaya Siddha Siddhayo Samobhutva Samatvam Yoga Uchyate. Now he takes from Karma, the principle of Karma, he takes him to Karma Yoga principle. The first principle, Karmanyavadikarasthi, is Karma principle. How should you perform an action? Do action for action's sake, not for the sake of result. Don't be attached to action, don't be attached to inaction also. Just do your duty. Next he tells, but when you do this duty with the right attitude, it becomes yoga, karma yoga. What is yoga? Yoga is that which, which kind of yokes you to something. Yuj is the dhatu from which yoga word has emerged. To yoke something to something else, to merge, to join. This is the idea of yoga. So when our individual intelligence joins the divine intelligence, we become as in Katopanishad, it says, Mahati Atmani, Jnana Atmani. We rise beyond our Jnana Atmani and it goes and becomes the Shanta Atmani. That is the principle. The individual intelligence merges in the divine intelligence. That is yoga. Then you don't act. The divine acts through you. You only become an instrument, a puppet in the hand of the divine. So that is the idea he tells him. Yoga Stakkuru Karmani. Establish yourself in this idea of yoga and then do your action. How should you? Sangam Tyaktva Dhananjaya. Without having any attachment either to action or the results. That is yoga without attachment to action or its results. Earlier shloka, without attachment to action or inaction. Now without attachment to action, inaction or the results, whatever comes out of it. And Siddha Asiddha Samobhutva. Whether something positive comes out of it, you succeed or you fail, keep, take both as equal. Why? Because equanimity is true yoga. See, if after doing an action, we are unable to be equanimous. During the action, we are unable to be equanimous. 
and before the action we are unable to equanimize that action is not a yoga it's only karma which will have karma bandhanas later so when i always tell people before undertaking an action during the action and after the action your state of mind should be same so your state of body may be different it is working then it is resting or whatever but your state of mind should be the same before taking taking up an action during the performance of the action and after the end of the action your equanimity should not get disturbed that is the that is the measure that is the principle or parameter to understand whether you have become a karma yogi or you are still doing karma you are remain unchanged throughout the process of performing the action right from the initiation till its completion you are not you are not affected so that is what is karma yoga is swamatvam yoga uchyate that equanimity is true yoga and that equanimity born out of right kind of action with the right attitude is yoga karma yoga and therefore using the same principle in another third shloka there he says buddhi yukto jahati ha ubhe sukrita dushkrute now use this buddhi this principle that when i perform the action am i getting disturbed by it disturbed by the desire for the results disturbed by the anxiety that will come out of it that whether i will succeed or not am i getting disturbed if i'm getting disturbed then i'm not performing it karma yoga why way i'm getting my equanimity is lost so finally he concludes krishna tells arjuna you have to perform your duty no doubt about it but buddhi use this discrimination and then perform whether it is good or bad later ubhe sukruta duskrute give up both the ideas of right wrong good bad positive negative success failure dualities give up just use your discrimination and think whether what i am doing is in the right way or not that you use and he says that tasmat yoga you just uh, with this idea of yoga go and fight the battle yoga karma su kaushala because only then you can perform this action with perfection the moment you have desire or attachment i want to do i don't want to do or i want this result out of it i don't want that result of, out of this particular action you can't perform the action to the very best of your abilities because you get attached your mind gets disturbed and you can't give you 100% you try it out anyway you try it out when you have any little desire or any anxiety you can't give your 100% your 100% perfection in action comes only out of equanimity when your mind is absolutely in the state of equanimity you give your 100% there why these great people have done are great because they merged their mind in the divine mind by the constant practice of devotion surrender or whichever way and therefore whatever they do is done by the divine and so it's always perfect it's never a, an imperfect action by a divine person i keep listening to the songs sung by these uh, bhajan boys and i hear the songs of great devotees purandar dasa tukaram meera bai and i think what what beauty of that devotion in in those expressions it's not human let's go back to our fiji hospital for a small deviation anybody who comes there and says this is not human i was telling how complicated things can get i tell them to build a hospital not a clinic then i tell them to build a tertiary care hospital not some secondary or primary health center i tell them to do cardiac tertiary care hospital not some orthopedic or ent or ophthalmology and i tell them in cardiac do pediatric cardiac care hospital the smallest hearts you have to mend and repair in a place where there are no pediatric cardiac surgeons forget cardiac cardiac surgeons only are not there and pediatric cardiac surgeons around this country there is only sea ocean nothing and then i tell them pediatric cardiac hospital to be built in fiji islands as i say no nothing and that too during covid times you have to get people man money material methods everything has to be borrowed from elsewhere and the borders are closed the one who comes in cannot go out the one who goes out cannot come in and they build the hospital and it opens and surgeries are going on you think this is human unless you surrender your entire will to the divine will saying not me you it's not going to happen nobody does it and most of all this is absolutely free of cost can you level can you imagine the levels of challenges that were thrown at them and they accepted it and delivered 
This karma yoga, because the surrender allowed this to happen, the divine will to flow and perfection happen. And this is one of the best facilities in the world that we have built, at least that I know of or I have seen. It's beautiful aesthetically, functionally, it's as needed, appropriate, state of the art. And it is so timely. Within the allotted time, it was all done. This is Karma Yoga only. Everybody sat here and did what was supposed to be done. And today it's ready. This is Karma Yoga because they did not think this hospital will succeed, not succeed. They just took Karishi Vachram Tava, whatever you said, we will do. I know there are challenges and they went through several challenges. As you know, he's a singer, he's not a pediatric cardiac surgeon, not even a doctor, not even remotely associated with hospitals, except that his wife is a doctor. But he had no idea. But they all worked together, the whole family, whole group worked together, the entire Sai Prima Foundation worked together. World came together to help them and today's hospital. This is possible as a divine grace only. See, these are all divine acts. But they are acted out, acted out through human, be human beings, using them as instruments. This is Karma Yoga. That person who becomes an instrument of divine is a Karma Yogi. Instrumentation is Karma Yoga. And this is what we are now going to step into in the fourth chapter. So, third chapter, as I said, the second chapter gets over with these ideas of Karma Yoga. And then it takes us to the third chapter. And third chapter, as Arjuna starts with again another confusion, he is the, question, the questioning kind of a disciple, which is good because that's when they learn, when you question. And Krishna is a very encouraging teacher. So, since he also learnt about Sita Pragnyas, you know, those who are Kvanimas, Samatvam Yoga Muchyate, and they are not affected by anything, there is nothing done by them, they are not affected by the results. So Arjuna is confused. Do such people exist? You know, he has Krishna in front of him, but he cannot recognize you know, spiritual myopia. So he is unable to see. But he is asking, are there such people in the world who can be, be like this, who can do all the action and not bothered about the results? And Krishna being self-effacing, he doesn't say, hey, Arjuna, look at me. I am here right in front of you, live exam. Because Arjuna thinks of him as a friend, you know. It's very difficult to convince your friends. You can never imagine a friend to become God. So that is the problem that uh, Krishna and Arjuna had. Nevertheless, Arjuna asks, you one side you tell me, Jnanis are better. Other side you tell you go and fight the battle. I am confused. You tell me what am I supposed to do. You tell me to do battle, then you tell Jnanis are better than fighters, or the action, performers of action. So what do I do? So he talks about Jnana, he talks about Karma. And then Krishna says, oh Arjuna, hold on. Both exist in this world. Lokesmin Vividha Nishtha Pura Prokta Mayanagaha Yana Yogena Sankhyanam Karma Yogena Yoginam. The both kind of people exist based on their aptitudes. One who take the path of jnana, wisdom, they meditate, they contemplate, they analyze, and then they realize the truth. Other side are those who perform actions without any expectations of results, and they also attain the same. He says both paths exist. And now he starts to tell them that how this is, there is a synthesis of these two paths. They are not separate from each other. But for the time being, he elaborates more on the Karma Yoga part of, in the first, the third chapter of Karma Yoga. And there Krishna goes on to say, see, nobody can escape action in this world. Everybody has to perform actions. At least for their own survival, they have to perform action, if not for attaining some higher things. So he says that, Nahi kashchit shanamapi jatu tishtatya karma krit. All those who are born cannot, even for a moment, stay without performing action. You say, no, I was sleeping. No, your sleeping is also an action. Till there is ego in you, you are the performer of the action. When there is no ego only, there is no action that is associated with you. Beautifully, Ashtavakra says, Yasyadantah syad ahankaro na karoti karoti saha nirahankara dhire na na kinchi dakritam pritam. Beautifully, he says, the one who has no, one who has ego, no ego inside, whatever he does, he does not do it. And the one who has ego, even if he does not do it, he does it. Because his ego identifies with the work. So I am sleeping, that's a work born out of your tamoguna. That time the tamas is driving you. So that Krishna explains that nobody can escape action. So because action is so crucial and central to living on this earth, so we must know the science of action. The art and science of performing action is a must. If you don't know, we will do it all wrong and then end up in a mess. Then you have Kanjama Chakra Punar Janma. You know, Sanatana Dharma has these two principles of karma and punar janma. You, you are born, then you perform actions. Because of actions, you are born again. Because you are born again, you perform actions. The chicken and the egg story. It goes on and on and on. One leads to another. You are never ending issues. 
So the only escape is you know how to perform actions correctly so that you are not born again. That is the idea of karma yoga. So crucial to this. So then he says that see we all perform yoga karma but let, let us perform with the right attitude. With the right attitude. What is the attitude is of offering yajna. He says there are gods who blesses Ishtan Bhogani Godeva Dasyanta Yajna Bhavita. When you offer something to somebody to the divine to gods as yajna. Yajna is again is a kind of sacrifice. No, you don't have any desire for yourself. That yajna when you do, you perform to gods. The gods bless you with whatever you require. And that is how you can continue living in this world, doing good and not get attached to the actions and results. But if you don't offer to God, you consume it for your selfish sake, you do everything for your selfish sake, then you are a thief. He says, you are a thief. And that is why he says, you have to offer everything to God. That is the first step of Karma Yoga. I am doing something. I can't imagine I am not the doer. I am the Atman and all that. Minimum you do is Krishna Paramastu. It's you, you. It's for your sake I do. For whose sake do you study? I ask the students. To get the highest marks and then get a gold medal and then join the, some Ivy League university somewhere and then become some big shot somewhere. Or is it because the skills, knowledge, abilities that you develop will help somebody will better the lives of some other people. Money and the salary and name, fame will follow. That's the shadow. When you want the coconut uh, on the tree, you climb the tree. When you get the coconut, you get the shadow also. So these are shadows of the original idea of why you perform action. For the sake of Loka Sangraha, it is the concept. Krishna teaches, I have no role, no duties whatsoever. I don't have any duty whatsoever. Still I work all the time. Incessantly, I am engaged in action. For what sake? For the sake of Loka Sangraha only. For the betterment of others, not for my own sake. And he gives example like Janaka and all have done that for Loka Sangraha. And this is how you will be able to attain the higher truth. And if you don't do good actions, you don't set good example for others, then society will be ruined because we need good examples. And for that sake, you must perform action. You are a Kshatriya, you run away from battlefield, it's a bad example. And somebody asked me, what is the best seva you can do? I told them, just be a good example. Be an example to others, that's the best seva you can do. And who is the best example? Who is Atmanyeva Atmana Atushtaha Sita Pragnya? The one who is satisfied within himself and is a Sita Pragnya, his intelligence, his, his equanimity is always there, steady. He is the best example. He can perform all the actions but remain steady and equanimous. So that kind of example you become. He said, Yadjira Chariti Shrestha Tatat Deve Tarojana. Because as noble people perform actions and do set examples, the other people follow them. So society needs good examples. See, today we don't need big policies, we don't need uh, sanctions, we don't need uh, any other rules, regulations, law and order. We just need good examples to inspire others to perform similar actions. Krishna works for the sake of the betterment of the society to give a good example, set a good example and he is encouraging Arjuna also to do so. That's all is your role. You are a singer, be a good singer, a devoted singer will inspire devotion in the hearts of listeners. If you are a good teacher, be a good, very good teacher who inspires students to attain wisdom and that knowledge will help them to help others. Anything, you are a policeman, be a good policeman. You are a doctor, be a good doctor. Do everything for the sake of setting an example for others. That is the idea of Karma Yoga too. So he says only those people, all others you know who are um, performing actions in, in a way other than this. That is they are performing with the idea of results. They are performing with a selfish motive, not offering it to God. Or they are performing not for the betterment of the society but for their own self, better, betterment of their own selves. All those people are bound by actions and their reactions will be so sooner or later experienced by them. But only those people, Atmanyeva Chan Santushtasya Tasya Karyam Na Vidyate, the one who is satisfied within oneself, established in the self, that I am divine. For such a person, no action occurs. So, do you mean they are always sitting quiet and doing nothing? No, no, they are super busy. But they are not doing anything. Everything is being done through them. Because the divine does everything to them. They are just instruments, expressions of divinity. That happens to them. They don't perform. And then he goes on to say that all the actions in the world are performed by the gunas. Prakritehi kriya manani gudani karmani sarvashaha ahankara vimudatma karta ahamiti manyate. Foolish people think I am doing the action. But truth is that the action is being performed out of the guna. 
Guna are the basic qualities that we are born with, which have accumulated in us over several births and associations and work. You think of it. There are surgeons. Four surgeries a day. Each surgery takes two to three hours. It means they have worked for ten to twelve hours continuously in such an intense way. Even if I tell you to watch twelve hours of an entertaining cinema, you can't watch. You will feel uh, even though sitting with popcorn and whatever else, you will get bored and tired after some time. Twelve hours standing on their two feet and performing surgery—that's such an intense thing. Yesterday, we a surgery threw up some surprises also. They they didn't expect some other complications. Nevertheless, they went for it and they finished the surgery successfully. How can a surgeon stand for twelve hours? Then I asked our doctor Sean, who is the surgeon. Doctor, he is a, he is another karma yogi by himself. So I asked him, "Hope you are getting some rest." He simply said, "It's your energy. You give us the energy." She is not attributing. Yes, yes, I am. You know what? I have done so many surgeries. This is a left hand uh, work for me. There is nothing big about it. Four, four, I can do eight surgeries. Never said like that. He simply said, "Your energy works through me. Your energy means not physically my energy. The divine energy that permeates everything. Isha vasan idam sarvam." That energy of the divine works through me. He said, "He is instrument. He is karma yogi." So when the action happens like this, when he attributes it to the divine, the results also should be attributed to the divine. So success will also be attributed to the divine, and in case there is a failure, that also goes to the divine. That is the idea of karma yoga. See, we are seeing people around us doing it right in front of our eyes. So that is what he tells, and he says that you you. Understand that we are all born with certain gunas, and your guna is Shatriya. Means you are a warrior clan. You are born as a warrior. You can't escape. That's why Rama Krishna Paramahansa tells Vivekananda. Vivekananda goes to Rama Krishna and says, "Please bless me with that one more kick. You give me. I want to experience that bliss." Uh, so Rama Krishna laughs and says, "No, I'm not going to do that. You are being very selfish." He says, "No, but this is the ultimate. I don't want to anything else. I just want to experience that Brahman's bliss." He says, "Nothing doing." You have to go around the world and give talks about Vedanta. Vivekananda says, "No way, I'm not doing that." And Ramakrishna says, "Your bones will also speak. What do you say that you don't want to do? Even your bones will speak," he says. And true to his words, it happens because the guna is there. It won't allow. If I have sattva guna, it it compels me to do good to the society. If I have rajo guna, it compels me to be involved in tremendous action and passion. If I am tamo guna, Heavy in my qualities, then I'll always be lazy and lethargic. Do what you want, but I won't move around. So these are some. We all have balance of this, so we live our life. We need a tamo guna for sleeping. We need rajo guna for action and sattva guna for seva and spirituality. When there's a combination, everything is fine. But the moment the combination gets disturbed and one over, uh, you know, powers the other, then there is a disturbance in our action. So he says, understand the concept of gunas. Your guna is shatriya guna. You'll have to perform this action. And he says it's better you perform the action. So then, so dharma ni dhanam shreyam paradharmo bhayava ha. It's better to you act like shatriya because you're born as shatriya. It's better you do your duty than to act like a sage. Oh, I want gyana. I don't want this battle because you actually don't mean it. Your gunas won't permit you. Just go ahead and do this. He tells them, and then he asks what, how, why do people knowing all these things commit sins? He says rajo guna is the reason for people to commit sins. It is selfish. See, tamo guna people find it difficult to commit. They say so lazy they can't commit sin also. <laughs> Out of laziness, who will go and eat? Simply forget. Let's not fight. <laughs> Too much work. Sattva guna people will give why fight. Rajo guna must fight. <laughs> so rajo guna are the people who are ragadvesha people who always are busy. So but Krishna says, see, as all these weaknesses are there in us, indriyas are there, mana is there, buddhi is there, and atma is there. Indriyani paranya hu mana ha. Above mana is buddhi. Above buddhi, buddhi is atman. Invoke the power of atman within you. It is don't go by your senses and mind. They will take you this way. They are like highway robbers. They steal away your discrimination. Don't even use your intelligence because it may be limited. Invoke the atman within you. Invoke the divine and let the divine act through you. That's how you should perform your action. Karma yoga means you let your mind merge into the divine consciousness. That the divine consciousness flow through you. Like our doctor Sean said. You are energy is working through me. You ask me personally, do we know how to do surgery? No. Then what does he mean by I working through him? It is the same divine supreme consciousness which is working through him is what he is saying. 
that is karma yogi look at this i just summarized the first three chapters now i am getting to the fourth chapter the beauty of the fourth chapter is that till now we learnt karma yoga and remember the question arjuna asked in the beginning gyana is better or karma is better don't confuse me between the two you say become a, a sthita pragnya and then you say go and fight the war which one should i do then krishna says do both do both makes it further complicated this is the fourth chapter gyana karma sanyasa yoga karma yoga understood karma sanyasa yoga okay you can understand detach yourself from the action gyana detach yourself with the knowledge of why you are detaching the knowledge is important with knowledge you perform not blindly there is a story you know one person performs satyanarayan puja in the home there is this uh, there are rats you know they come in eat up uh, the prasadam kept there so to serve uh, this uh, menace of rats he gets a cat now the cat is all over the place so to keep the rats in control and keep the cat also under control he gives gets a basket and puts the basket over the cat upside down and then puts a stone on the basket so the cat does not topple it off and go away and it's kept in one corner of the puja room so now when next time satyanarayana puja is being performed somewhere far away a list comes from the pujari photo of satyanarayana devata these many bananas these many apples this much of ghee that many leaves these many flowers and one cat one basket and one stone why nobody knows if you ask the pujari why shastra say like that keep quiet they will shut you up you say okay fine that's why this new generation doesn't believe in our rituals because whenever they ask a question our elders tell shut up and just do what is being said don't question so then they don't like it they rebel why should i do you don't answer them then they run away you have to answer they have to explain no no it is not necessary now in once upon a time there were rats in one puja so the cat was brought then cat was running around so basket was brought and basket was moving so stone was brought but that is not a part of the puja list but it became unfortunately see karma yoga karma sanyasa yoga but without a gyana it's a waste it's a wrong way of doing things so now krishna is elevating the concept of karma yoga saying do action do action with detachment no no desire for results but do it with the knowledge and what is this knowledge krishna is talking about very very subtle he says who is the doer in the first place ask yourself are you eating are you breathing are you walking are yes i do everything you say but when you are asleep be fast asleep like in your science and maths class who is breathing who is uh, digesting your breakfast which you had which led you to this wonderful blissful sleep who did that who is doing that who is breathing through you you are not aware till the duster lands on your head so who does it all the time there is something else which does na prane na pane na मृत्यो जीवति कश्चन इतरेन तो जीवन्ति यस्मिन एतो उपाश्रितौ दैट इज व्हाट आवर कटोपनिषद सेस इट्स नॉट बाय प्राण अपान बाय कॉज आई ब्रीथ इन एंड आउट दो आई एम अलाइव नो यू आर अलाइव सो यू आर एबल टू ब्रीथ इन एंड आउट एंड द रीजन फॉर यू बीइंग अलाइव इज बियॉन्ड जस्ट ब्रीथिंग इट इज समथिंग एल्स दैट कीप्स यू अलाइव दैट इज डिविनिटी दैट डिवाइन कॉशियस द आइडिया ऑफ ज्ञान कर्म संन्यास इज टू रियलाइज हु यू आर एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट यू परफॉर्म योर एक्शंस एंड ही सेस इमम विवस्वते योगम प्रोक्तवानहम अव्ययम विवस्वान मनवे प्राह मनु रिक्षवाक वे वब्रवीत ही सेज दिस नॉलेज दैट आई एम गोन टू टेल यू नाउ विच हेल्प यू टू ट्रांसेंड ऑल दिस डुअरशिप एंड एंड जॉयरशिप दैट वॉज टोल्ड फर्स्ट बाय मी टू विवस्वता विवस्वता इज द सन गॉड एंड विवस्वता टोल्ड टू हिज सन एस ओ एन दिस टाइम मनु इज कॉल विवस्वत मनु यू नो इन इंडिया देर इज अ टाइम लाइन यू हैव युगास एंड महायुगास देन देर आर मनवंतरास एंड कल्पास एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट so in this manavantara the manu is called vivaswata manu so that is a discussion for another time the how many years in a yuga and things like that so this particular manu learned this from the sun god and then he taught to his descendants of ikshvaku dynasty that is the sun dynasty very popular ikshvaku rama is from ikshvaku dynasty and this is how this was passed on he says then in the second shloka he says that evam parampara praptam इमं राजर्षयो विदु स काले नेह महता योगो नष्ट परंतप दिस इज हाउ एज अ परंपरा परा अपरा परा मीन्स हायर अपरा मीन्स लोअर दैट गुरु शिष्य परंपरा फ्रॉम अ हायर पर्सन और हायर 
person of higher wisdom, the wisdom follows to the lower person. So this parampara came unbroken for a long, long time. But in the recent time, this has been, uh, you know, kind of uh, disturbed or destroyed, and this knowledge was lost because of this parampara did not continue. He says, "See, parampara is so important. When I tell about our institutions, what we are doing, university is here to create teachers." these teachers have been these students who are becoming teachers are being created by their previous teachers now these teachers should teach the students and create the next generation of teachers when i was in tumkur campus and there was an inauguration function four generations of teachers were there the oldest the next generation the next generation and the next generation which is studying now so i said this is our parampara guru shishya parampara and he says uh, our in shikshavalli guru tells the shishya to so don't break this lineage of guru shishya this learning and teaching don't you give it up it is very important that we keep up this so even krishna suffered he taught it he says but on the way it got lost people didn't learn from each other why did they didn't learn from each other there was not a fit, fit good guru nor a fit disciple that's why when nachiketa goes to yama and tells teach me about that which is beyond death and the yama finds all reasons why he should not teach and tests him thoroughly and then finally says satya dharma ya you are a satyadruti you are very resolute in learning i need i never seen a disciple like you i'm so delighted i am going to teach and also uh, nachiketa tells him that only if somebody like you speaks can i learn because this knowledge is so subtle yama says nobody can learn a fitting a good guru has to be there and a good disciple has to come together so looks like you were a long time in the lineage of ikshvaku or whichever dynasty there are not many disciples who were fit enough to learn this transcendental knowledge and therefore this knowledge was lost and now comes he says that this is the knowledge i'm going to teach you and why do i teach you this is also very beautiful he says sa evayam maya te adya yoga prokta puratanah bhakto si me sakha cheti rahasyam hyet uttamam he says i am teaching you this old knowledge because you are my friend as well as a devotee see god also doesn't teach just like that to anybody who is a friend of god there are many kinds of bhakti navavidha bhakti is there shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam vandanam artanam pada sevanam dasyam sakhyam atmanivedanam dasyam sakhyam atma dasyam last three years dasyam means servitude sakhyam means friendship and atmanivedan means surrender so before the final stage of surrender when you become divine the previous stage is friendship and he tells krishna you deserve to know this knowledge because you are not just a devotee you are also my friend and we share secrets with our friends right this is a very secret knowledge it should not be told to anybody shaita shrad upanishad says or as he says he says vedante paramam guhyam pura kale prachoditam na shantaya datavyam na putraya ashishyaya va punaha this is a very secret knowledge this should not be just distributed like i do this is not allowed you must do not tell this to those who don't have peace of mind to learn it whose minds are disturbed and not steady don't teach to uh, somebody who whom you don't know like your own son or whom you have not accepted as your disciple after thoroughly checking and testing don't give it to them our ancient self said so we should not give but here he is giving that knowledge to arjuna because arjuna you are my friend it's a secret i want to share with you like friends share secrets how sweet is that relationship between arjuna and uh, krishna in such some part that later he tells priya priyaya sakheva sakyu like a beloved forgives another his loved one like a friend forgives his friend like a father forgives his son please forgive me for all the nonsense that i have took you through arjuna tells towards the end i really understood how loving you are and i made uh, some silly things silly mistakes please forgive me like a beloved forgives a business beloved like a friend forgives his friend like a father forgives his erring son so here he says you are my friend so i share this secret with you which has been lost for a long time for want of pity fitful disciple and guru so this is how it is ascharya vakta shala asya labda katobishat says speaker should be amazing and the disciple should be deserving you see so that is the beauty of this both have come together but arjuna the question starts krishna i thought you were born in the, the this uh, dwaraka and uh, mathura and uh, you are saying that you taught this to sun gods as far as i know sun god has been there for even now 5 billion years minimum sun has been there solar system has been there 
so were you born 5 billion years ago that's not true so arjuna starts look at arjuna's question only a friend can ask such question to another friend so aparam bhavato janma param janma vivasvatah kathame tad vijaniyam tomado proktavan iti you were born later the vivasvata means the sun god was born earlier then how are you saying that you taught that sun god because he is still thinking of krishna as his friend from gokula then mathura vrindavan his cousin he is not realizing that krishna is the super consciousness whatever you call brahman himself so krishna must be smiling in his heart of hearts but still he tells him very sweetly arjuna bahuni me gati tani janmani tava cha arjuna tanyam veda sarvani natvam vetta parampat we have we have spent many lives together we have been born, we have born again and again this is not the first time you and i are meeting here we have a long relationship i know all of them you don't know then one may ask question oh so was krishna born earlier than rama is that what he meant by born again but in rama was born after the sun god came yo don't get into this kind of questioning what krishna means is i taught that vivaswata the first as the brahman himself how did our yogis learn all these things were they having teachers by simply absorbing their minds into the super mind of the god they learnt everything we had that communication no para pashyati the para communication when you sit down meditate it reveals itself to you even katobnishad says it reveals itself it, you don't have to ask for it it doesn't come telling you it just reveals to the deserving person so those yogis to the sun god and sun god is such a beauty example he is the best example of karma yoga can you think of anybody a better karma yogi than the god sun god every day he rises burns himself out for the sake of welfare of others he gains nothing out of it he knows if he if he is there the solar system is there the planets will go around driven by whatever the forces that govern them if sun disappears it burns out or moves even a little from its position everything will be a chaos in the solar system and the galaxy so he has to keep doing what he has got to do for not for a moment he can stop working we might go to sleep in the night but sun is still burning on the other side that is karma yoga so he says i taught this karma yoga i am sure he has taught otherwise sun god could not have been such a good karma yogi he must have learned from krishna and the karma yoga is going on even today as we sit and talk sun is burning somewhere himself out for the sake of betterment of the world for the sake of the protection of others what an example i always give the example of sun god so that is the idea so he says that we have been living before also it is not the first time i know all of it you may not be knowing that is your problem but i teach you as a friend such a sweet relationship then he says very important here is one he starts revealing who he truly is he says ajopi sanna vyatma bhutanam ishwaropi san prakritim swamadishthaya sambhavami atma mayaya though i am unborn though i am indestructible though i am the lord of everything everyone yet i manifest myself through maya shakti in a form and a name in a certain place so the first time is revealing to arjuna arjuna i am not just krishna whom you know as your cousin i am the same divine supreme brahman who has used the maya shakti the creative power to manifest as this krishna in front of you but i have been here forever i am never born i never die i am always divine i may look like undivine at some times but i am always divine maya makes you think like that teliyaga dharma narula kanugana vasama param tapo nidulakaina brahmakunaina says can anybody know his true divinity even the yogis have failed even brahman doesn't understand who is like that brahma not brahman brahma doesn't understand who is so that is the yogi krishna is so he says that by maya shakti and we know in aitari upanishad how brahman was there and there was nobody to know and then he thinks let me create and then he creates thinks becomes ishvara and from there he creates maya shakti comes into picture then comes the creation he becomes the hiranyagarbha then comes virata and from there comes the jivatma so the process that etru upanishad says so so he created himself out of himself he is the for creating anything else what do we require we require a person an instrument of creation and the material to create a potter wants to make a clay pot he has to get clay he has to get a wheel and he has to get the, the he has to use his hand to do it so we have upadana karana nimitta karana we call it the doer 
with, with the instrument and the material. But here, Krishna says, I have created out of my own Maya Shakti, my own self, I have created out of myself. Like the spider that creates the web out, out of its own self, lives in it, swallows it and moves on to the next place. Mandagopanishad. That is how Krishna has created himself out of himself through the Maya Shakti. And now he appears to be a man with a flute running behind Gopikas, chasing cows. But he's beyond that. That's what he's trying to tell. That's a beautiful. And then he says, Why do I come to this? Why do I do this? Yada yada hi dharmasya. Whenever the righteousness is in decline and unrighteousness is increasing, in order to set the balance right, I manifest again and again. Yuga, yuge, yuge, again and again I come back to set right the equilibrium of right and wrong in this world. Dharma samsthapana arthaya, to establish dharma, to establish peace, harmony, love in the society, I must manifest myself again and again. Sambhavami yuge yuge. So he says, this is why I come here again and again. Not one yuga, two yugas. Every yuga I come whenever there is discipline is lost and uh, people are losing their moral rectitude and they are going the evil ways. I come to establish dharma. Sometimes I punish the evil. But today where do I punish the evil? Tell me. Everybody is bit evil, bit good. So today all that is within ourselves only. So what is the dharma Krishna is asking? Atma dharma, so dharma. You are divine. To teach you that you are divine, I am here. It's no more about kill the kill those evil doers and save save the good ones. It is simply to establish that you are divine. Believe that you are divine. That is the ultimate dharma that Krishna has come to establish. So this is how he says, and then he says. So now the next before this, Arjuna asks the next doubt. Oh, so you are also born again, and again. You also have some karmas like me. And Krishna says before he asks, he says. Janma karma cha me divyam. My dharma and karma is all divine. I am not bound by your karma and karma cycles. I manifest out of my own will. You have no choice. Karma bhir, karma bhir jayate tatra tatra te mundukopanishad. Because of our karmas of the past, we are born again and again in certain places to certain people. We have no choice. We are dragged into the wombs and dragged uh, out of the bodies by Yama. But here Krishna says, Janma karma chamedivya, my actions and my birth is divine. And evam yo veti tattvata, the one who understands this truth of mine, tyaktva deham punar janmam naiti mameti sojuna, the one who understands this truth, who I am, once he gives up the body, that is after finishing the worldly duties, is not born again. How do you know Krishna? How do you know God? You be God, then only you know God. God is not an experiment, it is an experience. You must know God by being God. So what he says, if you really know who I am, why my birth has happened, what my actions are all about, it means you have become me. Only because you have become me, you know me. And the one who becomes me has no birth again. So this is the idea, very important shlokas. And then he says, then there are many shlokas, but I will take a few of them from here, which I think might be important. He says that um, people do all kinds of jnana, tapa and everything to purify themselves so that they attain me. All the actions are to be to purify chitpasti shuddhaye karma. All our actions should purify our mind. Any action that is taking us to impurity or taking us away from the divine goal, this is not a good action. We must shun it. That is a dharma. Dharma samsthapana means teach people to do the right things will take you to their divine self. And also Krishna says very beautiful in the 11th shloka, Ye yatha maam prapadyante taam tathaiva bhajamyaham. Those who want to worship me or surrender to me in their own, whichever way, I respond to them accordingly. You are my father, yes. You are my mother, yes. You are my friend, yes. You are my guru, yes. Whatever you think I am, I become that. You are my enemy, yes too. Parhavana Rama became the enemy. So, whichever way you think of me, I respond like that. Krishna tells Arjuna, you think of me as a guru, now I am responding to you as a guru. You think of me as a friend, I will respond to you as a friend. So God is just reflection, reaction, result. Whatever we think of him, he becomes that for us. So there is no particular shape, name, attributes, form and rules and regulations for God. He is the most flexible, most uh, easy, convenient uh, thing on earth. It's, it fits into whatever vessel you put him into and take the shape and size, like water. So beautiful our concept of God. See all other, I am not praising or ridiculing philosophies, but many philosophies are so rigid about who God is. 
and how he should respond and how he should not respond also they have made a rule so even if god says no i want to respond no 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 our rules don't permit if you want to be worshiped by us you better follow our rules but sanatan dharma nothing doing god is flexible he is nirakara on one side sakara on the other side his father on one side he can be son on the other side he can be a friend on one side he can be an enemy on the other side in whichever way you worship him and surrender to him he will respond to you like that how beautiful this sanatan dharma is it gives you the flexibility to worship god as you think you like as you feel like nobody tells you this is the only way and that is not the way at all anybody who says like that he is blasphemous according to sanatan dharma you must allow the flexibility that is the beauty of this sanatan dharma and he says that all beings come to me only ultimately by following different paths and i respond to them in their own way and he says that all these beings uh, worship god demi god semi gods we worship they they do the blessing and they give them what they require but ultimately if somebody worships krishna what what do they get they'll get krishna himself why because krishna is equal to krishna pratyabhamas tulabharam when she weighs krishna in gold she can't weigh weigh krishna because how much of gold she puts krishna seems to be heavier though he is such a slender lean fellow but you know is not to, oh, the gold is not able to overweigh him so finally one tulsi leaf rukmani puts with the name krishna on it and it weighs equal so if you worship krishna you will get krishna and that is the idea you worship all the other uh, gods kaankshata karma naam siddhim yajanta ih devata for the sake of various desires people worship various gods we all know examination time most popular god ganesha everybody goes to ganesha suddenly it becomes so popular all through the year one side ganesha examination time other side so people worship all kinds of god ashipram hi manushya loke siddhir bhavati karma ja through actions like these by offering prayers to god and seeking blessings people attain successes and things like that they do various actions another very very important concept of sanatan dharma is getting introduced in 13th shloka which says chatur varnyam maya srishtam guna karma vibhagashah tasya kartaram vimam vidhaya kartaram avyayam i have created the four limbs of the society i would not call it categories i won't call it classes because that's the most controversial issue in the hindu dharma that you have bar brahmans and you have shudras and things like that but krishna says i created these four limbs of society i am not calling it classes or categories higher or lower they are simply four limbs there are brahmanas kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras you know what they are brahmanas are the intellectual class kshatriyas are the warrior the ruler class uh, vaishyas are the business and tradesmen and shudras are the worker class labor force all of them have been created by me based on guna he says not by based on birth based on their interests and aptitudes in our scriptures we have seen valmiki was born uh, uh, hanta shudra so to say but he became a gyani a rishi so much so that he wrote ramayana and we all read that ramayana vashi vishwamitra was born a king kshatriya kaushika and when went went to become vishwamitra one of the greatest sages brahma rishi even vedavyasa was born to a fish woman uh, mother but he went on to write all the vedas and classify and we all chant the vedas so where is this the, this whole idea of you know categorizing people into higher and lower classes is a modern idea but caste was never a word in our uh, system at all varna was the word but varna means different types types does not mean superior and inferior types means a type a rose is a rose and a lotus is a lotus so how do i classify rose is better than lotus everything has its own place in the creation that's why purush suktam says brahmanas chimukham asit brahu rajanya krita uru tadas chedyesya padhyam shudro jayata from the same purusha the virata purusha of aitreya upanishad from the face came the brahmins the intellectual class from the hands came the kshatriya the warrior class from the belly came the vaishyas the tradesmen and from the feet came the labor force shudras but all are limbs of the same body can, can you give me your, your legs away because your legs are inferior to your head no all are part of you therefore everybody is equally important in our society and we must respect this classification at the same time not not differentiate or discriminate between them that is very very important from the point of krishna and he says i am the doer of all these things do i am the doer of none i don't do anything yet i am the one who has created this various limbs of the society for the society to grow and thrive and what is the purpose of society we all live together in harmony help each other to grow towards god 
I to V to He. I is individual, V is society, He is divinity. So this method I have created, Krishna says. Yet I am not the doer of any of these things. I am not the doer, He says. And very beautifully He says, Namam karmani limpati, name karma phales praha, iti maam yobi janati, karma bir nasa badyate. Neither I have desires for any actions nor any actions bind me. The one who knows this principle, he is never bound. I don't desire for anything, nor I have desire uh, any actions, you know, results or anything that I desire for. I have no such things. So I am not affected by any of these things. I am never bound. So you will say, you build the hospital, tomorrow if the child uh, becomes uh, alright, are you going to get punya? No. If something goes wrong, are you going to get papa? No. Both are I don't attribute to myself. But unfortunately, the fools do both. If something good happens, they'll attribute to themselves, they get excited. And something goes wrong, they'll find some scapegoat around. Because of you, because of you. And some even uh, uh, weak-minded people, they blame themselves and suffer all life. So I tell you, be in a, you must be very, very clear about action alone you can do. Results are not your problem. Actions you do perfectly. Yoga, karma, so kaushalam. Do perfectly to the best of your ability, but don't de develop desires for results. That will trouble you. And then you will suffer like this. So he says very clearly, I am not bound by all these desires. I may order 100 hospitals to be built. In those hospitals, thousands will be saved. A few may die also. Neither those who are saved nor those who suffer are attributed to me. I am very clear. Why? Because I am not bound by any action. I will do what is the Yadayat kattumayati tat prutva tishtati sukham. This is Tashtavakra says. Pravruttava nivruttava daiva dhirasya durgraha. To engage in action or to withdraw is not a problem for a dhira. The wise one. Whatever comes his way, he does it. Another beautiful example he says. He says, uh, like Shipta Samskara Vatena Cheshtate Shushka Paranamat, like a dry leaf floating in the wind. It appears to be going on its own, but it is not going on its own. Whatever samskaras are there, they are taking him. Today I was watching the ocean is there, no? uh, the waves will come, they will bring a dry twig. It will come floating till the shore, and then it will go back along with the wave. It looks like the twig is going up and down, but it is not doing anything. The waves are bringing him close to the shore and taking that, bringing, bringing it and taking it back. Appears that it is doing something, it's not doing anything. Likewise, I appear to be doing everything physically, mentally, but inside I am like not doer nor enjoyer. Ashtavakra tells uh, Janaka, Dharma, Dharma, Sukha, Dukha, Manasani, Nate, Vibho, Na Kartasi, Na Bhoktasi, Mukta, Evasi, Sarvada. This idea of Dharma, Dharma, right, wrong. And good and happy and uh, bad, uh, sad experiences born out of good and bad actions. None of this is you. This is all in your mind. Na kartasi, you are not the doer, na bhaktasi, you are not the enjoyer. So who are you? Mukta evasi sarada. You are the free soul, self. You are neither the doer nor the enjoyer. This is not just karma yoga. This is jnana karma with the wisdom who you are. You are not the doer, you are not the enjoyer. You are the ever free self. That is the idea and same thing our uh, Ishavasrit Nashad says, 100 years you can live like this. Kurvan neveha karmani jijishe shatagun samaha evam tvai nanyate tosti na karma liptyate nare. If you live with this attitude, 100 years you live and work, no action will bind you. If actions don't bind you, then no birth and death and no more actions. So you are all bound by this. Why jnana karma sanyasa yoga is important? Because this wisdom alone can give us the right attitude to do the action. Otherwise, very difficult. So, till now, the action was do it perfectly, do it well. Don't desire for the results. Don't be affected by the results. Now, we are saying who is the doer, who is the enjoyer. This is why it is Jnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga. This karma detachment dispatch is born out of the wisdom Jnana. That is the beauty of this particular chapter. So, you have to understand the depth of what is being told over here. And I will keep a few. Okay, it says this is how people were learning the Mumuksha, Mumukshu, those who desire liberation, they work like this. And what is our true goal of life? Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Everything that we do is to liberate ourselves. It should not bind us. It should free us. Actions bind and free. So how do we perform action depends on that. So this is how you perform action from the ancient times. Those who wanted liberation, they all performed actions with this knowledge. But they are not the doers, they are not the enjoyers. Then everything falls into its place. And then he goes about saying that... Um, People are confused about what is good action, what is bad action and what is uh, inaction. 
ఐ విల్ లెట్ మీ టెల్ యూ అబౌట్ ఇట్ కిమ్ కర్మ కిమ్ అకర్మేతి కవయోప్యత్ర మోహిత ఈవెన్ వైస్ వన్స్ గెట్ కన్ఫ్యూజ్ షుడ్ దిస్ యాక్షన్ బి పర్ఫార్మ్డ్ ఆర్ నాట్ పర్ఫార్మ్ బైండ్ విచ్ ఆర్ ఇస్ బైండ్స్ ఆర్ నాట్ డజన్ బైండ్ ఇట్ డజన్ డిపెండ్ ఆన్ ది యాక్షన్ డిపెండ్స్ ఆన్ ది యాటిట్యూడ్ విత్ విచ్ యూ పర్ఫార్మ్ ది యాక్షన్ ది ఇంటెన్షన్ బిహైండ్ ఇట్ దట్ ఈస్ ది కీ యాక్షన్ ఈస్ నాట్ ద రీజన్ ఫర్ అవర్ బైండింగ్ అవర్ యాటిట్యూడ్ ఈస్ ద రీజన్ కరెక్ట్ ది యాటిట్యూడ్ డోంట్ ట్రై టు కరెక్ట్ ది యాక్షన్ ఇఫ్ యాటిట్యూడ్ ఈస్ రైట్ యాక్షన్ విల్ ఆటోమేటికలీ బికమ్ రైట్ దట్ ఈస్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అండ్ వీ ఆల్ హ్యావ్ టు అటెండ్ లిబరేషన్ సో హీ సేస్ దట్ దేర్ ఆర్ త్రీ కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ కర్మ దేర్ ఇస్ అ కర్మణో హతి బోధవ్యం బోధవ్యం చవికర్మణ అకర్మణశ్చ బోధవ్యం గహన కర్మణో గతి ఐ విల్ టీచ్ యూ నా అబౌట్ వాట్ ఈస్ కర్మ వాట్ ఈస్ అకర్మ వికర్మ విచ్ ఈస్ ద అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ అకర్మ కర్మ మీన్స్ యాక్షన్ గుడ్ యాక్షన్ వికర్మ మీన్స్ ప్రొహిబిటెడ్ యాక్షన్స్ అండ్ అకర్మ మీన్స్ నో యాక్షన్ ఎట్ ఆల్ త్రీ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ యాక్షన్స్ ఎగ్జిస్ట్ నో యాక్షన్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో అన్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ యాక్షన్ దట్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ ట్రైంగ్ టు సే అండ్ యూ సేస్ వైజెస్ట్ వన్ వాట్ ఈస్ టు బి డన్ వీ ఆల్ నో వాట్ ఈస్ మారలీ రైట్ వాట్ ఈస్ గుడ్ ఫర్ ఎవ్రీబడి వాట్ టేక్స్ యూ టు యువర్ డివైన్ సెల్ఫ్ దట్ ఈస్ ధర్మ యూజ్ దాట్ యాజ్ ది గుడ్ యాక్షన్ వాట్ ఎవర్ టేక్స్ యూ అవే ఫ్రమ్ యువర్ డివినిటీ మేక్స్ యూ సెల్ఫిష్ మేక్స్ యూ యూ నో మోర్ సెల్ఫ్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ సెల్ఫ్ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ self centered avoid all that which is morally legally not right avoid all that that is we all know that and what is akarmana akarma no action at all some people will say it means not doing anything is no action no krishna says no action is much deeper than that the one he says next shloka karmanya karma kya pashyet karmani akarmani cha karma yah the one who sees action in inaction and the one who sees inaction in action that person is the wise one he says imagine the plight of arjuna krishna simplified the one who sees action in inaction and inaction in action he is the wise one it means the one who is doing everything externally but within that himself he knows he is not doing anything that person alone is wise he says who did it i did not do it but you i saw you only doing it yes the body did it the mind did it i did not do it i as the self was just a witness na kartasi na bhoktasi that is the idea he is telling and he says the one who is do, does like that in all is doing also there is no doing at all but you know his spirituality is all about the opposites he is everywhere he is nowhere he is far it is near it for goes far it also stays in the same place this is do this kind of uh, what you call paradoxes exist only in spirituality are you the doer yes but i am not the doer also i would say so they get confused but the truth is that that fellow is a wise person ashtavakra says no bhranta they are called as if people look at them as mad people but only another mad person like him will understand his madness he says antar vikalpa shunya se bahi swachhanda charina bhranta se eva dasha tas tadrusha eva janate so this is the idea that worldly people look at godly people as mad godly people look at worldly people as mad so only they know each other when they meet each other so this is the idea and uh, main idea is that if you have ego then you are the doer even if you are not the doer if you have no ego you don't identify yourself with this person body and mind then even if you do everything you are free from all there is a story that how a man who had fathered 100 sons with his wife were crossing a river the river is in full spate and the wife said how do we cross there is no boat nothing he says no problem if he tells the river if i am a brahmachari i am a celibate this river should part and give me way and the river parts his wife is shocked she says but you have fathered 100 sons with me how can you be a celibate he says that is body it's doing its own duty i am as self i am un- unaffected i am not the doer the river understood that so that is the idea of non doership and non enjoyership they appear to do and enjoy but they actually don't do either and i towards I'll, i'll skip a few and then says that uh, those who live like this that is how the karma should be done and there is this shloka we always use brahmarpanam brahmahavi how the how is how is their attitude brahmarpanam the offering is brahman the instrument with which offering is made the ladle also brahman the ahuti whatever is been put inside the fire is also brahman the fire itself is brahman which abs- takes it the one who lives with the attitude attains brahman it is said ekam e ekam eva advitiyam the one doesn't see the second at all only sees one everything is brahman this body is also brahman mind is also brahman Our emotions are brahman the experience is brahman everything is brahman the one who lives with this attitude he reaches brahman it is said this is jnana karma pranaya yoga this attitude with this understanding of wisdom you must work and he says that may many many people do all kinds of 
worships, you know, to attain this wisdom. Like he goes on to explain, I think from 25 onwards, uh, it uh, goes on till 29, different types of uh, arpanas that they do. Some people offer uh, physical things into fire and that's how they try to attain divinity, like performing yajna. Some people, what they do, swadhyaya the yajna, they do the study scriptures, that is their yajna. Some people offer all their indriyas into their mind and restrain it, contain like yoga, hatha yoga and all. They are also doing some kind of yajna. Some people engage with the indriyas in the world by for the betterment of the world. That is also a kind of yajna. So, all kinds of yajnas are being told by Krishna that all these, some people put the inco, outgoing breath into ingoing breath, ingoing breath into outgoing breath, all this is kind of yajna. But what he says ultimately is that everything that we do should be done as the attitude of yajna only, as offering to God. Because yajna shishta mrita bhajo yanti brahma sanatanam, the one who offers everything and only accepts the results out of an offering. You go to temple and you don't go and tell the priest, you know, sugar is a little less in your sweet today, prasadam. Can you put a little more sugar in here? You just accept bitter, sweet, whatever you take in and eat it as prasadam. So that is the idea. When you do yajna, you offer whatever comes back to you, take it as prasadam and eat it with joy. Because it is a divine gift. So everything, good, bad, ugly, everything is divine gift. The one who thinks like that, he reaches Brahman, they say who has no such a priorities, this is what I want, this I don't want. But those who don't have this attitude, this is very important. So, Nayam loko asti ayyasya kuto anya kuru sattama. He says, for those who don't have this attitude of yajna, they do things for their selfish sake. And he says that these are the various things which Vedas have told, you know, whichever path you take, do it with the right attitude, with the wisdom of why you are doing. This is the main point of this uh, chapter, which we go back again and again. And he says, the one uh, who does this uh, thing, Shreyan, Shreyan Dravyam Yajnat, Jnana Yajnat, Yajnaha Parantapa. He says, rather they are doing physical offerings, mental wisdom, Jnana Yajna is more important, he said. The doing physical uh, sacrifice is very easy. Purchase something from the market and put it into fire and feel good about it. Give up your uh, ego, give up your attachments, give up your uh, likes and dislikes, give up your uh, ideas and ambitions. Which is, which is actually yajna, you tell me. Sacrificing a goat in the temple is very easy. Sacrifice your animal qualities. Nothing. Buddha was telling once, Buddha was going and a lot of goats were being taken to some kingdom for a great sacrifice. So, Buddha asked, where are these goats going? So, they are all being taken for a great sacrifice. They all will be cut and offered to the deity. Buddha said, let me see what kind of sacrifice and how. What, how. Then he goes there and asks the king, why are you killing all these goats? He says, they will attain liberation. He says, don't you want to attain liberation? He says, then why don't you cut your neck? Why are you cutting the poor goat? It does, goat doesn't even want liberation. <laughs> you want it. Why don't you chop your head and offer? You are chopping the poor goats. With Dravi Yajnas. No use. Jnana Yajna. Constantly meditate on the truth. That is Yajna. Every thought is an ahuti into that contemplation, pay contemplative fire of wisdom. I am divine, I am divine, I am divine, I am divine. That yajna you do with every breath, soham, 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 it's telling you in and out. Do that yajna. Don't go and purchase too many material and throw it into the fire. It has to be done for a certain reason. That is one part of it. That is the ritual. Ritual is not spiritual, I always say. Spiritual is that spirit which should be there. And how do we, so the next question that how do we learn how to do this? He says, Tadviddi paripatena pariprashnena sevaya upadekshanti te jnanam jnanina tattva darshinaha. So, to learn this kind of wisdom, I need, you need a guru. You must go and fall at the feet of the guru with complete surrender and ask them the right kind of questions, not stupid questions born out of ignorance, but born out of great tapas and penance and great desire to know. Must go to a guru, he says, and fall flat at his feet, it's completely surrender to him and then they will tell you about these truths. So find the guru. Guru is so important in our life. That is why Shankaracharya, Always emphasis on Guru's, you know, importance of a Guru. Guru Kripahi Kevalam. With Guru's grace only we can attain it. Krishna himself is saying, to learn this knowledge, please go and follow it. somebody, some real Guru's feet, not Guru who does not have, who has not experienced, who is borrowing the knowledge and telling you, go to a Guru who has experienced this. All others are Acharyas. They are not Gurus. Guru is the one who has experienced the knowledge. Acharyas are the one who can teach you from a text. Upadhyayas are there, Acharyas are there, various categories of teachers are there, but Guru is the ultimate and Sadguru, 
Sadhguru is not just experienced is one who is always in that experience. Outside he may be busy doing hundred things. Inside he is always in this experience. Go to that person and learn from him. How should you learn? Completely surrender. Empty yourself of all your ideas, attachments, desires. Completely surrender and learn from them. That is what he is saying. And Shashiri Baba explains this shloka a little differently. He says, Upadekshanti te agnyanam, he says. They can only teach you about what is not real. What is real, you have to experience for yourself. That is how Shri Baba explains this shloka. Even if you go to a guru, he can't tell you, show you the truth. He can show you what is untruth. Truth you have to find for yourself. That is how he explains. So he says, if you know this, never again you will get into this attachment of the world. That's why the Tasmin Drishte Paravarish Vidyate Hridaya Granthi Chidyante Sarvashamshaya Shiyante Chasya Karmani Tasmin Drishte Paravarish is Mudaka Upanishad. Your doubts are dispelled once for all. Your karmas are destroyed once for all. And all your, uh, this Gridaya Ganti, these knots of the heart they call, that is Avidya, Karma and Kama and Karma. Ignorance leading to wrong desires, leading to wrong actions. This is cut asunder once for all. That is why Jnana Yoga, because Ajnana leads to all these wrong actions, Jnana will lead to right action, right desires of Moksha. So this is how it is. And then he, I'm, I'm, even the worst of the sinners, this is a very, 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 uh, what do you call, for all the people, it's a very comforting shloka. Api chedasi papebhya sarvebhya papa kruttamaha. The worst of the sinners also, if they take to this path, sarvam jnana plave naiva vrijanam santarishasi. Like a boat that can carry the sinner and saint together to the other shore, this wisdom can save you. See, you might be the worst of the sinner. Ajamila, Bhagavatam says, worst of the sinner. Last moment he remembers God and he is redeemed. Narayana, he says. And this knowledge can redeem you. Why? Because it's a jnana, it's like a fire. All your karmas are like seeds which are yet to sprout. Put it into fire and roast them, Ramakrishna Paramsa says. They become important. They cannot grow anymore. Likewise, shiyante chasya karmani tasmin drishte paravare. Once you know that highest thing, all your karmas are cancelled. What a great relief. Imagine like Covid times, all exams are cancelled. What a relief. You have passed. You passed. What? I didn't study at all. Doesn't matter. You pass. You have three kinds of karma. Sanchita karma, yet which we have created and yet to experience it. Agami karma, which we are about to undertake. And prarabdha, which is right now we are experiencing. Because we did sometime, we are experiencing now. If you know the knowledge of the self, your past karma, that what is there is destroyed, which are yet to fru bear fruits. The karma that you are going to perform will perform with the right, right attitude, so that karma phala is destroyed. Now, what you are experiencing, which is already in motion, you can't change that. But it gives you the ability to bear it. So, both, and all three karmas in a way are reduced or destroyed. Even the worst of the sinner, Papa Kuttama, not Papi, best of the Papis, also are redeemed with this knowledge, he said. That's why he goes to say, Yathai Dhamsi Samidnogni Basmat Kurute Arjunaha, like fire destroys all the wood that is put inside it and it makes into this. Jnana Adni Sarva Karmani Basmat Kurute Tha. This wisdom of fire of wisdom destroys all our karmas. What a beautiful relief. So for that sake, at least you do. And that's why he praises Jnana. He says, Nahi Jnana na sadrisham pavitram he vidyate tat svayam yoga sansiddha kale natmi vindhati. This is why wisdom is so important. There is nothing equal to wisdom in this world. This wisdom of the highest self. Why? Because the one who has who is ready himself to attain this wisdom, sooner or later he will attain it. But what a relief. Kale natmani vindhati. What a hope for everybody. Even the greatest the sinners can attain the highest if they fall, fall, walk this path of wisdom. Go to a guru, surrender, repent for the wrong and learn what is to be done. And follow it implicitly, you are redeemed. Once you know this wisdom, immediately you are redeemed. It goes on to say, Shraddhavan Labate Gyanam. But who will attain this wisdom? Shraddhavan. Shraddha means absolute sincere devotion and faith. Great interest, intense interest in knowing this knowledge. The one who really wants it, gets it. The one who wants it, also this and also that and nice to have it but not necessary, they won't get it. He wants this and this alone. How it should be? Like a man on fire, whose body is on fire and searching for water. Go and tell him, come, we'll see a movie, he will not come. Come, we'll have burgers, he will not come. He'll say, give me water, I want to jump into a pool. My body is on fire, my head is, my hair is caught fire. That kind of intensity the one who has, gets it. So that is Shraddha. Shakracharya defines Shraddha as Shastrasya Guru Vakyasya 
ಸತ್ಯ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯಾವಧಾರಣ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ಸಾ ಕಥಿತ ಸದ್ಭಿ ಯ ವಸ್ತು ಉಪಲಭ್ಯತೆ ಫೇತ್ ಇನ್ ಗುರುಸ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಫೇತ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಒನ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ದ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ಇಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಪ್ರೀ ರಿಕ್ವಿಸಿಟ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಅಟೈನ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ರಿಡೀಮ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ and he says the one who does not have this attitude ha ah, very beautiful the next line also gyanam laddha param shanti machare natal gachati once you know the knowledge you immediately attain peace see this is not a peace that will come after 10 years to you you sow a seed today you will get the fruit after 10 years if you attain this wisdom then and here and now you will attain peace that is the uh, phalashruti of this have shraddha learn this wisdom from a guru be sincere in approach you will attain peace immediately ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಅಷ್ಟವಕ್ರ ಯಥಾ ದೇ ಯದಿ ದೇಹಂ ಪೃಥಕ್ ಕೃತ್ವ ಚಿತಿ ವಿಶ್ರಾಮ್ಯ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ಅಧುನೈವ ಸುಖಿ ಶಾಂತೋ ಬಂಧ ಮುಕ್ತೋ ಭವಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಎಟ್ ಎಟ್ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಯು ಅಟೈನ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಬಾಂಡೇಜಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಅಟೈನ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೌ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಟೆನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೌ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಜಗ್ ಅಗ್ನಿಯಶ್ಚ ಅಶ್ರದ್ಧ ದಾನಶ್ಚ ಸಂಶಯಾತ್ಮ ವಿನಶ್ಯತಿ ದಿಸ್ ದಿ ಯು ಸಂಶಯಾತ್ಮ ವಿನಶ್ಯತಿ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಡೌಟಿಂಗ್ ಟಾಮಸ್ ದೇ ಪೆರಿಶ್ ಹು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇನ್ ಗುರು ಹೂ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇನ್ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಹೂ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾತ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಾಲಿಟಿ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಡೂಮ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಸೈಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ದೋ ಇಗ್ನರೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಡೂಮ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೆಮ್ ನಾ ಎಮ್ ಲೋಕೋ ಅಸ್ತಿ ನ ಪರೋ ನಾ ಇದರ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೆಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಪೀಸ್ ನಾ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅನದರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾ ಸುಖಂ there is no peace for sanshay atmana for the doubting thomases there is no peace in this world in the other world nowhere they find peace they are always restless and disturbed and then he goes says yoga sanyast karmanam gyana sanchinna sanchayam using this yoga karma yoga the one who has renounced the actions and the results desire for results and attains this wisdom this wisdom is like a sword like a weapon with which you can cut asunder all the ties to this world ಆತ್ಮವಂತಂ ನ ಕರ್ಮಾಣಿ ನಿಮಗ್ನಂತಿ ದ ಒನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಕಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಸಂಡರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಬಾಂಡೇಜಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಬೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ವೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಷ್ಟವಕ್ರ ಸೇಸ್ ದೇಹಾಭಿಮಾನ ಪಾಶೇನ ಚಿರಬದ್ಧೋಸಿ ಪುತ್ರ ಕಹ ಇಟಲ್ ಜನಕ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬೌಂಡ್ ಬೈ ಯುವರ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಬೋಧೋ ಹಂ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಖಂಗೇನ ಖಡ್ಗೇನ ತನ್ ನಿಷ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ಸುಖಿ ಭವ ಕಟ್ ಅಸಂಡರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ವಿತ್ this knowledge that aham who you are and be free how beautiful and then he says tasma gyana sambhutam tritsam gyana sinatmanah chitvainam samshayam yoga matitthastoti tishtho tishtha bharata he says the using this weapon cut asunder all their bondages of ignorance and be free and establish yourself in this yoga of karma gyana karma and you will never be bound this is the ಜ್ಞಾನ ಕರ್ಮ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಯೋಗ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಯೋಗ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಯೋಗ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಕರ್ಮ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಯೋಗ ದ ರೂ ರೈಟ್ ಆಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವಿಸ್ಡಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೂ ಯು ಆರ್ ವನ್ಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಹೂ ಯು ಆರ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಅವೇ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಟಿಲ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬೌಂಡ್ ಯು ಸಫರ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ಟೆಲ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಪರಾವಿದ್ಯಾ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಸೇವ್ ಯು ನಹಿ ರಕ್ಷತಿ ಡುಕ್ರೂನ್ ಕರ್ನೆ this is what will save you your math science or arts will feed your stomach
but it's accumulated karma of many many births many young people are great shankaracharya is there so wise how can you attain wisdom in 8 years 10 years no it's not is 8 and 10 years it is births of the births of bhuni me vatitani janmani because of that that has come to him arjuna has deserved this because of several births of tanis we all have deserved this opportunity because of several births of tanis but human birth itself is a great blessing on top of that finding uh, a desire developing a desire for moksha is a second blessing and then finding the company of great people manushyatvam mumukshatvam mahapurusha samshaya what more do you want krishna is saying that only you are born as human develop desire for liberation all your actions should be oriented towards that and find a guru who is a living example of such life and attain wisdom and with that wisdom will redeem you even of the greatest of the sins you have committed even till this morning you have committed sins by afternoon you are redeemed how wonderful and best part is that once you do that your property changes you can't go back to your old ways so there is absolute full proof methodology this is no reversals possible this is irreversible transformation once for all all other transformation are reversible you keep shifting between two states once you become god you are god you can't become human again you behave like human but with complete wisdom of who you are so that is karma san gyan sadna sanyasa yoga anyway this chapter ends here the next chapter start which is karma sanyasa yoga you will think from gyan karma sanyasa yoga why is bringing down to karma sanyasa yoga because for everybody this is not possible it takes time but nevertheless you should know where you are reaching where you have to go at least goal should be clear but there are milestones to cover so next chapter is like a milestone that you can cover on the way before you reach this wisdom so truth is that karma gyana bhakti are not different from each other they all are intertwined like a sweet its weight its size its color its sweetness all this is together you can't define it by one and not the other like that bhakti karma gyana all are one by tasting it we know that it's all one fools will keep arguing on it but the man of wisdom knows everything is one we do all our actions with this wisdom that we are not the doers or enjoyers we do it as an offering to our higher self that is the yajna that we perform and for what sake for the betterment of the world that is good, full of karma yogas essence and um, i hope that you will pay attention you will contemplate as a shrotavyam mantavyam nididhyasitavyam listen to it contemplate on it and practice it that's very important so next time you are doing an action ask is this going to lead me to liberation or bondage am i doing with an idea of doership and enjoyership or i am free from both am i equanimous before during and after the action or i am getting disturbed ask all these questions and then perform the actions and even if you get disturbed halfway through and you feel uncomfortable take a little pause recall uh, recollect all the wisdom that you have learned and gather yourself again calm your mind down reorient yourself realign and then go ahead in this path see when tires go out of alignment we have to realign them otherwise lead to accidents like that when our senses get uh, uh, out of alignment or mind goes out of alignment go back and listen to the lecture and then again start, start it see unfortunately and old times this you know, wisdom was not possible for everybody but today it is possible thanks to youtube and of course thanks to the people who put these videos on youtube but you can listen to it any time anywhere right so use this opportunity and don't waste this opportunity this is what i am saying otherwise we can never recover this loss that we will uh, undergo if we don't pay attention now and here so wishing you all the very best on your spiritual journey and wishing you all a lot of love and uh, blessings from sai prema ashram in fiji by the sea side and i hope someday you all will get to visit this beautiful ashram and also get to see the beautiful hospital that has come up and on the wonderful work that is going on in fiji islands we are all one global family and we live for each other we work for each other we work for the welfare of each other that is our way let us continue to do this and never stop this even for a moment in our lives that all our lives actions be oriented towards attaining liberation to service to mankind without any selfishness or self interest with these words of blessing i'd conclude today's talk